What's up guys, this is Justin from Studio G and welcome back to another G Academy video. Today we are going to talk about my favorite Gundam of all time, the Babatos. And this is everything that you need to know about my favorite Gundam suit, the Babatos. Let's get this started. So before anything else, let's talk a little bit introduction of Gundam Barbatos. The ASWG08 Gundam Barbatos is actually Mikazuki August's main mobile suit. It appeared in the first season of the Mobile Suit Gundam anime series I Am Blooded Orphan. So Gundam Barbatos is actually the eighth out of the 72 Gundams that were used in the Calamity War that happened 300 years ago in the anime. And later on, the Crusade Guard Security, CGS, used it as a power reactor because the Ahab reactors were still functional, it's just that the cockpit was missing. And then later on, the CGS worker kind of installed the cockpit from the mobile workers into Barbato's cockpit so that Mikazuki can pilot it. So over the years, poor maintenance and also everything kind of degraded after 300 years. And then later on, it was rectified by Teiwa's technicians and it was brought back to its full potential. So that was a brief introduction of Gundam Barbato's in the world of anime. And now let's look at the real life story. It was actually designed by Mr. Nayohiro Washio. He's a mechanical designer that worked on a lot of the Gundam franchise series. He worked on the Gundam 00, the 00V, 00F, 00 the movie, Iron Blooded Offense, obviously, Build Divers, and also Build Divers Rewrites. So he designed robots for a living. How awesome is that? So now let's get back to Babados. Gundam units like Babados, they can achieve really high energy output due to having double Ahab reactors. But it's so difficult to run them both concurrently and and cohesively in operation. So the burden on the pilot is super, super high. That's why you can see Mikazuki always, always, always shouting and you feel so tired after operating Babatos. So the Gundam Babatos is also improved and adjusted for versatility on the battlefield. It has the potential to adapt to any circumstances thrown onto him. And then last but not least, he can also use the weapons or armors from defeated enemies to win a fight. Now, Barbatos has several forms, but the most known forms are the six forms. The first form is the form where it was discovered 300 years ago on the desert of Mars by Maruba RK, the president of CGS, and they use it as the HQ's power source. So at the time, it did not have any shoulder armors, just two black in a frame inside, as seen in the first ever episode of the IBO series. So the second form happened when CGS was reformed into Takeda. Basically, Oregon and Mikazuki and the team did a coup and kind of bring down the president and they changed the whole thing from CGS to Takeda. And later on, the Babatos was fitted with shoulders armors from the captured EV-06 Grace. So the shoulders armors, they are colored in white and blue, just like the main body. And it was actually coated with nano laminate armors. So the third form and the second form really don't have much difference to be honest. After the battle with Galahorn, the second form is actually fitted with the wire claw captured from Galio's Schwabel Grace to fix its left arm arm. And now it's time for the fourth form, which is the original Gundam Babatos that we all know and love. And they were actually reproduced by Teiwa 6 technician at its base, Saisei. It is based on the ancient database recorded during the Calamity War and they found in the database. A little bit of side note here, all the orphans, they are literate or... I don't know how to say, but basically they do not know how to read because they never received any formal education. They were street kids that were captured into Mars, were sold into Mars to work as labor workers. And somehow, when Mikazuki is plugging into Babatos, he knows how to read the database. So that's how they got it. Okay, with the fourth form, the weight distribution and everything is readjusted. So the Gundam Babatos is actually at its peak performance during that time. Now it's time for the fifth form. The fifth form involves added waist boosters, redesigned forearms with motor, and chest mounted reactor armor provided by Montag company. So the waist boosters increase its mobility and versatility when fighting in space and the reactive armor kind of serves as a countermeasure against Kimari's attack with its gun near the lens. So in the fifth form there's also something that's called the ground type. It's actually a modified version of the fifth form and it's actually created for industrial use which is to help the Montag company with its eco turbines. The leg suspension was actually adjusted to Earth's gravity. Remember Barbatos is actually from 
Mars and it has a higher center of gravity, leading to faster reaction time, more versatile under Earth's gravity. The added waste boosters were actually removed because it's kind of useless at that point. And then the forearm motors are actually replaced with auto cannons. Now it's time for the sixth form. The sixth form is actually an evolution from the fifth form itself, the ground type. The side skirts are refitted with tail boosters. Shoulder armors are actually from the EB06R race reader. And they added additional armor to the chest. So it's like a big boob guy. And obviously all the added armor and everything, it provides more protection and it kind of reduces the versatility and also the mobility of Gundam Barbatos, but he also adds like power supply. It has more juice. He can keep battling for a longer time. And one trick to the shoulder armor is that it can be deployed as a decoy if necessary. Just like a lizard, like deploying its tail. Like that. <laughs> Now let's talk about the weapons of Gundam Babatos. Professional language we call it armaments. So when the president of CGS, Maruba RK, found Gundam Babatos from 300 years ago, the Calamity War, remember that guys? He actually came with its mace. So they kept it thinking that he might use it in the future. So good move from there. It's a large physical weapon. It's, it's basically a huge giant mace made from high hardness red alloy that is also used in mobile suits frame. You know those things are solid. It's like Elementium or Vibranium. The center of the maze actually features a power driver that acts as a needle to pierce any enemy. If you like jab it in and then there's another additional needle like in Philippines, they call it masake. <sighs> so they were basically used to pierce enemy mobile suits. The maze handle is telescopic and it can be stored on one of the backpack's arm and it's used by the first form until the fifth form. Next, it's the infamous long sword or as we call it, the katanas. So the katanas is actually not the Babato's original weapon. It was actually manufactured and fabricated by Teiwa's technicians in size. It's easy to handle and it shows its superiority during localized attack. The grip is later improve to kind of minimize the kinetic energy for Babatos when he's using the weapon. As much as we all love the katanas, Mikazuki actually do not prefer it, so it's actually his backup weapon because it's quite hard to handle. The sword, just like the mains, can be stored on the backpack arm and it's only used by the fourth form onwards. Next, let's talk about the gondo. This weapon is actually not so widely known for Babatos because it's actually used on the first and the second form and it's thought to be the original weapon alongside with mains for the Gundam Babatos. But the bad thing is that when Babatos lost its arm, during the fight with Galhorn in Mars, the Gauntlet was lost as well. Next is for the smooth board gun, which is huge as gun cannon. The round is this big, man. It's freaking awesome. And it has a 12 round magazine. I don't know, I've been watching Kim's Convenience on Netflix and the people in the series pronounce magazine. And it's mainly used in zero gravity conditions when he's fighting on space because that thing is so freaking heavy and I, I doubt that it will be as powerful as when it's used in space if it's used on Earth. Gravity. That thing emphasized on power rather than accuracy. So with its 12 round, probably only two rounds hit the enemy. I'm not too sure. So the high-speed bullets, right, basically the rounds, are designed to penetrate the nano laminate armor. That was something that is widely used in that universe itself. Other than the 12-round armor, once he's finished with the 12 rounds, what to do next? He can use the machine gun that is attached at the bottom, and that one is 6 mm So the rounds are still like kind of this big, which is pretty awesome as well. To get around storing such a huge gun is that the whole thing can be folded up in half and be stored in Babaton's backpack arm when not in use. It's used from the second to the the fifth form of Gundam Babatos. Now let's talk about the GRES-02 wire claw. That is something that I don't even notice as well until we do research on this video. Basically, it's a shooting claw weapon mounted on the left forearm that was actually obtained during the battle with Galahorn. It is used to restrain enemies as well as clinging to enemy vessels. It was taken from Galio's Schwabo Grace and it replaces its lost gauntlet, used only in the third form, unfortunately. Now the arm motor. The arm motor is actually designed for the Kuton Type 3, which is something that the mobile workers use, which can be used for mobile suits as well. The two motors can start inside both of Babatos arm. Then it will flip forward for firing. Once it's launched, the second motor slides up. Then the launcher kind of flips back. When it's launched, that's where they reload the second motor. This is only seen during the fifth form and it can also be used for the sixth form if needed. The 170mm auto cannons. The forearm can be replaced by these auto cannons 
experience and it uses a helical magazine. The barrel extends when it's in use. They are not really suitable for long range battles due to its limitation on ammunition, but it's super, super effective in close combat. It's used by the fifth form onwards. So fifth and sixth only use it. You know that Gundam Barbados love its maze, right? And do you know that it has a large special maze as well? It is to replace the original maze. Basically, if you don't know how it looks like, it basically looks like a T-Rex head freaking awesome with chainsaw and stuff. It's called the Wrench Maze. So it's a superb striking weapon. The front portion can be opened up and closed to kind of climb onto enemies and then there are chainsaws and then they're kind of like eat things up. So that is actually one of my favorite weapons for Gundam Barbatos, but in the model kit itself, it's impossible for him to hold it up straight. Like everything else, it can be stored in the backpack arm when not in use, and it's only been used for the fifth form and the sixth form. Other than the weapons, its mobility, versatility, and all that kind of good stuff, it still has some really special features that we haven't spoken about. It's the Alea Vignana system. Damn, it's a mouthful to pronounce. Again, Alea Vignana? System. Sounded like Spanish though. It's an organic device system implanted in both mobile suit and its pilot. Basically, what it does, instead of using controls and all that, it allows a direct communication between the pilot and the mobile suit. Simple terms. It's a direct connection. It's like a USB plug built in inside your spine that send the transmit your brain signals straight to the mobile suit. So if you're thinking of going forward, it will go forward. You don't have to press or push any buttons or levers. For example, like in Guren Lagann, it's controlled by feelings. The louder you shout, the better it moves. And it has only two movements, like grip, push, grip, push back, and turn, push. Oh, to, to, to. So it's like working out in the gym. And with this Alea Vignana system, they don't have to do all that. Just relax, chill, bro. You can smoke a joint in the cockpit, but you probably get, get kicked in the head by the Tewa's technicians. <laughs> But anyway, it allows direct communication between the pilot and the mobile suit. So the Alea Vignola system is actually not that good because it's actually super cruel. Kids that were brought in, street kids, those orphans are actually tortured and they were forced to bear this system at a very, very young age because the system needs to grow with its pilot in order for it to operate correctly and perfectly. It's actually a sad story. Don't ever do that to kids. It's no good, okay? But this is also the the story that compels the entire series. Kids, orphans, breaking out, striking for freedom, striking for their own success as well. So now the Babatos and Mikazuki, they share a special relationship. Babatos, it has its limiter removed. So remember when I said about the Ahab Raiders, they produce a very high output, and it actually hurts the pilot through the Alea Vignana system. But Mikazuki is the only person in that universe that can handle such load without breaking down, without bleeding through its I mean, at one point he kind of did, but he was really pushing the limit at that point. So Mikazuki and Babatos shares a special relationship that coexists. Did you know at one point Babatos can actually fly and he actually flew up to space? That is when he was fitted with the Kuda Type 3, which is a backpack booster that is actually used for transporting containers and mobile suits as well. So they modified it and fitted it with him and then he can fly up to space for battle. And it can travel at extremely high speed in such a short amount of time. And other than that, let's focus a little bit on the backpack arms. It's one of the features that is kind of neglected. It's actually a very genius design where the backpack arms when not in use can be closed off and can be hidden away in thrusters and then when it's in use it will deploy grab onto the katana the maze or the smoothboard gun and the thing is that they are flexible they have joints they can move around so that the smoothboard gun can be used even while it's being attached to the backpack that is some genius design. So now let's get back to the real world situation here with the model kits. So unfortunately, Babatos, even though it was loved by so many people, including myself, the model kits did not get too much love. So far, they have created a line of HGs for Babatos. So for the Babatos, you can actually find from the first until the sixth form. Other than that, nothing much to it. And then they also created only one single MG. That is a joke. I've already spoken about this and I wish Bandai, can you please watch my video, please? and then revise the whole thing and make more Barbados for us, please. So they only made one MG Barbados, which is actually the fourth form. And then they made a bunch of 1 over 100, which is the full mechanics, the FM. And they also come up with the high resolution, which is the HIRM 1 slash 100. That's it for model kits for IBO for Barbados. It's actually a shame because I think if I'm not mistaken, it's actually one of the most popular anime series and it's being shown on Netflix. So why don't you do something about it? 
Last but not least, let's look into the overall history of Gundam Barbados. So when the Calamity War that happened 300 years ago was still ongoing, Galahorn developed all these mobile suits, not to fight each other, but to actually counter the threat of mobile armors. They are kind of like an alien race that came out of nowhere, start attacking everybody, and they just have to develop some form of weapons to fight that enemy. And one of the threats at that time is called Hashmo. I've actually customized Hashmo myself. If you guys if you guys haven't seen it, please go check it out. It's actually looking like a bird thing with huge shoulder armors and two legs and a tail. So it's super, super powerful. And then later on, after 300 years, Gundam Avatar was discovered by Marubai RK, which is the president of CGS at that time in the desert, along with its maze. And when CGS was reformed into Takedon, Babatos was improved alongside of it. That's where we get first form until the sixth form. And Babatos is actually only one of Takedon's mobile suits. There's another one called Gundam Gusho the big fat ass guy that was actually transformed into a skinny guy. So Babatos actually has spare parts and it was used to transform the original Gundam Gushon to what is called a Gundam Gushon Rebake. So imagine like all mobile suits were like cakes. I don't know where the rebake name came from, but basically it was put into the oven and rebake it. So it's like, I don't know why. <laughs> oh, the names though. They were the names. Rebaked. It was pretty awesome, right? Watch the series, it's, it's good. So in conclusion, Gundam Babatos is my favorite Gundam, basically. I love him so much. I have actually customized him multiple times. Three times at least I did the original MG Babatos, the high grade Babatos Lucas Red, the MG Babatos from the first to the sixth form combined into what I call myself the MG Babatos 2.0 that comes with a scratch build awesome bike. Anyway, that's everything that you need to know about Gundam Babatos. If you love him as much as I did, please help us out on this channel by sharing this video with your friends and family. It will help us a lot. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And last but not least, don't forget to comment as well on what do you think about the video and what do you want to know next. Again, this is Justin from Studio G and this is G Academy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Later on, the Crusade security. Later on, the Crusade security guards. <laughs> no. So now that is kind. Of, okay. So now. Okay. So that was the brief introduction. Okay. So that was the brief introduction of the character. Okay. So that was the brief introduction. Okay. One time. It was actually designed by Mr. Nayo Hiro Washio. Wow, it's amazing. I pronounce it correctly. So Barbatos is also improvised to increase its versatility and mobility. Um, mobility. Basically, the waist boosters kind of boost the waist. <laughs> and one of the trends at that time is called Hashmo. 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 It's the Ayala Vignano system. <laughs> Let's look into the overall history of Gundam. Babatosa.